and irritability. I try my very best to leave a sermon title up to the Lord, and the subject that would ooze out of that would be exactly what he wants. I don't want to walk to that, this platform and do anything that would uh, be wrong, anything that would hurt someone, anything that would not be scriptural. I'll never forget the first day I walked into uh, Bible College at Tennessee Temple, and our professor was a gentleman that had been pastoring and preaching for years and teaching for years. He knew the Bible. He knew it. And so he would walk to that platform that morning, and he would say, Young men, do you have your Bibles? And we would hold them up. And he would say, Now, young men, have you learned something from yesterday to today that you didn't know before? And if nobody said yes, he didn't like it. You know what he'd do? Young man, you need to be learning something very important every day. And so when you go to bed at night or when you wake up in the morning, bow your head and say, Father, I need to know the truth about this subject. Will you show me? And so you see what I'm saying here? You know what that would do for me and you if we did that every day? We went to bed at night praying for the Lord to open up the word, to open up a subject that we need. And then he would teach us how to be loving and kind to others. He would teach us how to lead someone to the Lord. He would teach us how to lead other people to become better believers. Can you imagine if everyone in this building this morning was doing that? You were helping someone else, and there may be some of you that's doing that. I'm doing that now, and I love to do that. And so when you can help a young man or a young lady grow, you know what that does for them? They'll never forget that. They'll never forget it. I'll never forget G.N. Francis, my first pastor, what he did for me, a Temple grad, and how he helped me. And then Wayne Williams came, and then I headed off for Tennessee Temple, and there was Dr. Robertson. And it just seemed like it was one man right after another that was teaching me something. And so when I got out of school, I said to myself, Lord, let me help somebody else. Let me be a blessing to somebody else. We need to help young people grow. We need to help young people grow. Now, as we go through life, you know what we're going to meet? We're going to meet men and women that are angry. They're just angry men. They're angry women. I've met some Christians that were just mean. And I thought to myself, what in the world? You're a member of that church, you hold a position in that church, and your mouth is filthy. And then some of them, it was found out that they had stolen things. Now think about that. What kind of a, what kind of a picture does that put out to a lost world? And so what we're looking at here in the book of Ecclesiastes is this matter of the Bible and how it teaches about the matter of anger and irritability. Now don't raise your hand. Don't say anything. From last Monday until today, did you get really angry at someone? Did somebody get really angry at you, and how did you respond? Could have been a man or woman. Could have been your husband. Could have been your wife. Somebody that you don't know. But think about this. I've seen this happen down through the years. I've had it told to me down through the years. This young man was supposed to be a great Christian. But it was found out that when he was out on the job, he would steal and that he would lie. But he had a reputation of being a thief, and it got out. You see, Satan wants a disparagement thrown on the Bible. He wants a disparagement thrown upon this church. The same thing for you as an individual and for me 
as an individual. One day, I was driving with uh, a pastor, an older pastor than me. I'd been preaching for a while, but he was an older pastor. And I'd purchased one of these Coke. Remember when the, the Coke bottles were about like that? Just about like that and just about that, like that. I was drinking from that, and he looked at me and he said, uh, Bobby said, you, you shouldn't carry that type of drink with you. And I thought, what's he talking about? I said, it's a Coke. And he said, yeah, but from outside, it could be a beer bottle. And it just hit me. Wow. And so I thought, well, how am I going to drink my Coke? I've got to have my Coke. <laughs> and so uh, I thought, what am I going to do? So I went home, and you know what my mother did? She took that Coke label off of it, and she put another label on it with another brand on it. And she said, now drink all you want. Now, I don't know whether that hurt anybody or not, but I thought some things can be so silly, can it? But then on the other hand, it would be an awful thing to hurt an unsaved man and maybe keep him from being saved. Or a Christian that's going through a hard time. See what I'm getting at here? We are brothers and sisters. We're for, we're for one another. We ought to build up one another. And we need to be very careful about this matter of anger. The Bible has a lot to say about anger. The Bible has a lot to say about irritability. I would imagine this, if every one of us were really honest, in the last week we had some irritability. And I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand or say anything, but I would just about say that you would agree with me. There's a little bit of an irritability last week. I just hope that it wasn't something that hurt someone else or hurt your testimony or my testimony. Now, in the book of Ecclesiastes here, chapter 7, uh, I want to ask you fellas something. You think about it. I'm able to talk, to speak just real plain when I'm out there and when I'm outside. And when I get in this pulpit, my mouth starts to dry up for some reason. I, and I don't know why that would be. Maybe some of you experts uh, would know a little bit. One thing, it might just be the devil trying to get me to where I can't speak. And there's some people, listen now, there's some people in here that needs it this morning. And there's others, others out here that need it. There's some over here that need it, and so I know who you are, and I know what you've been doing this week. The Holy Spirit said they're bad off. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> All right, now I got you to laughing. The Bible on anger and irritability. Now look in Ecclesiastes 7, beginning in verse 1. A good name is better than precious ointment, and the day of death than the day of of one's birth. I had a man tell me one day, he said, are you Tom Boofer's son? And I said, yes, sir, I am. And he said, I want to tell you something. Your daddy is the most honest man I have ever met in Ray County. And he's the hardest working man that I know of in Ray County. I've watched him. Now, my dad was not a saved man at that time. And things would get him irritable, but he'd try to keep it to himself. But anyway, down through those years, I'd keep praying for Dad that he'd get saved, and he did. And so just thinking now about how people react to us and that we ought to be praying at all times. But Satan has us watched. He has a horde of demons that watch us constantly, constantly, and reports back to Satan about things. Now, if you think I'm wrong, get your Bible and read Get your Bible and read what Satan's doing day after day after day after day. And you'll find out that you better keep your eyes open, your ears open, and watch your heart. Keep your ears open, eyes open, watch your heart, watch your irritability. Okay, I love this passage in chapter 7. A good name is better than precious ointment, and the day of death than the day of one's birth. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, for that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his heart. 
Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the day of sadness of the countenance of the heart is made better. The heart of the wise, now listen, the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. Isn't that some verse? The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. There's fools all around us all the time. Verse 5, it is, said, it is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for the man to hear the song of fools. For as the crackling of thorns under a pot, so is the laughter of the fool. This is also vanity, and the word vanity is emptiness. I know a lot of empty souls. I've met a lot of empty souls. How sad. Verse 7, surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof, and the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Be not hasty in the spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. What a verse. Say not thou what is the cause that the former days were better than these, for thou dost not inquire wisely concerning this. I love this. Wisdom is good with an inheritance, and by it there is to them that see the sun. For wisdom is a defense. Now listen. For wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense, but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom that giveth life to them that have it. Isn't that a powerful verse? Memorize that verse. Look at that verse often. Young men, young women, all of us. For wisdom, that's verse 12 again. For wisdom is a defense and money is, is, is a, uh, to, to the excellency of the knowledge that wisdom giveth to them that have it. Consider the work of God. For who can make that straight, which he hath made crooked? In the day of prosperity be joyful, but in the day of adversity consider God also has set the one over against the other to the end that should find nothing after it. Now go up to verse 20. Verse 20. For there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Also take no heed unto all words that are spoken, lest thou hear the servant curse thee. For oftentimes also thine own heart knoweth that thou thyself likewise hast cursed others. And this have I proved by wisdom. I said, I will be wise. But it was far from me. That which is far off and excellent Deep, who can find it? Apply thine heart to know, to search, to seek out wisdom and the reason of things, and to know that uh, the, the wickedness of uh, folly, even of foolishness and madness. And I find more bitter than death the women whose heart is snares and nets, and her hands are as bands, whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. Behold, this have I found, saith the preacher, counting one by one to find out the account, which yet my soul seeketh, and I find not one man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all of those have I not found. Lo, this only have I found, that God hath made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. Now look at verse 25 again. I applied mine heart to know and to search out and to seek wisdom and the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly, even of foolishness and madness. Now let me ask you a question along with myself. Does that verse in verse 25, does that apply to you? 
does that apply to me? How much this week, how much time this week have you spent being wise and applying wisdom? I'll tell you this, if you have, you're much better off today than you were on Monday. Think about that now. If you've applied wisdom this past week, you're much better off than you were last Monday. And so he's talking about this matter of applying your heart to know and to search out of that wisdom. Now down to verse 27 he says, Behold, this have I found, saith the preacher, counting one by one to find out the account. What he's talking about is I want my eyes open, I want my ears open, I want to let God hear my heart and know my heart that I am seeking out the wisdom of God. Then I want to know how to apply the wisdom of God. Now listen, what I have read this morning, reading is just one thing. Memorizing it is another. When I left Tennessee Temple after three years, I looked back on hard work. And they would give us, our professors would give us many verses to memorize during the week. And I think, I've got four classes to go to. And then at the end of the week, they're going to give us a test. But now he wants me to do this also. And man alive, I had to work like a dog, I guess, if you want to call it that. But you know what? Down a few years later, I look back. I was standing in the pulpit one Sunday morning preaching at a church that I'd never been in before. And I was preaching, and I was going preaching through there. And I thought to myself, good Lord, I must have quoted 40 verses in that sermon. I didn't say it to anybody else. I said it to myself. And you know what I said? Thank God for Brother Long. And I just went down the line. Thank God for this professor. He was hard. But I learned a lot through that professor. And when I left school, he handed me that, deponent, that, that deponent, diploma, and I thank God for him. So what I'm saying is this, the Bible and anger and irritability. Now, be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Now, some of you weren't here last week, so I want to read these verses. And I'm going to take the time to do it because I want you somewhere, somehow to get these verses. Now, in James 1.19, Wherefore, my brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. John 14.27, Peace I leave with you, my peace give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, and neither let it be afraid, he says. Watch now. I want you to look at it here. Very important. Peace I leave with you, my peace give I unto you. Let not the, as not the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I love that verse. Now, Proverbs 16, 32. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. Now, most of you know uh, 2 Timothy 2, 24. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to, pay, to teach patience. And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and meekness. I know it's a lot of verses, and I'm going to give you some more verses. And just write these down. I think I gave most of them to you last week, but just there's other people here. Let me give you these verses, and you write them down, and then you go back and look at them. The first one would be meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Now, you know this one. Train up a child when he is old. Train up a child when he is old. Now listen, I thank God for that. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, 6. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place unto the devil. Ephesians 4, 26 and 27. Proverbs 25, 28. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down 
and without walls. Once again, Proverbs 25, verse 8. Proverbs 28, 11. A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it till afterwards. Proverbs 29, 11. You know this one. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. And then, not given to wine, nor striker, neither filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. Second Timothy, or First Timothy 3.3. 3. And then the last one, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Anger is an awful thing, terrible thing. It can destroy a person. It can do awful, awful things. One man said this, If there is one thing I have learned in my life, it is that anger is a response to action or pain directed against you. Think about it. It's an emotion that is always a reaction to some form of hurt. Obvious to me that anger is reflected hurt against you. Isn't that something? Now the verse is, God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And anger is one letter short of, dang, of danger. Now let me read that again to you. I've read this many times. Anger is one letter short of danger. We don't know who said that. There is one thing that I have learned in my life. It is that anger is a response to actions or pain directed against you. Think about it. It's an emotion that is always a reaction to some form of hurt. It's obvious to me that danger is reflected hurt against you. And someone said from the time that we were young, we were trained by everything around us to respond to hurt with more hurt or what we know is anger, it is self, listen now, it is a self-protective reflex. I agree with that wholeheartedly. All right, now think about that. Wounded spirits. I may be looking at a group of people this morning, a few of you, maybe more of you, you have really been hurt by somebody, a friend, a relative, a leader, a pastor. It doesn't, doesn't matter. You could be hurt by any type of an individual and they, they lose it. And they go out and they get back into the old ways and so forth and so on. And so we want to be careful about this matter of wounding people and wounding uh, their spirit. I like what he says here. Anger is one letter short of danger. Isn't that something? I thought about that, and we ought to put that to work in our life. Now, uh, time is getting by, but let me take a few moments today, and let's point out maybe three thoughts, and then we'll let you go. Number one, if you're taking notes, anger is unacceptable to God. Now, you say, well, now there's the right kind of anger. Well, yes. If I see somebody attacking my wife, I'm going to be angry. And a man or whoever is going to find out how angry that I can get. But that's a different story. That's, I'm, a, I'm protecting what's mine. You understand? But in any other way, anger is unsept, unacceptable to God. What the devil can do with anger, it can hurt a relationship. Isn't that a terrible thing? Ronnie Bridwell has been my best friend since I was seven years old. He was six years old. We're still best of friends. We call each other, we talk to one another, and his, he, he was married to one of our little girls at Pleasantdale, and she passed away, and then he found a, a girl in our church that her husband passed away, and then they married, and they're still married, and they're a wonderful couple wonderful couple but they've been hurt but they got past it and I'm thanking the Lord for that now think about this you run into a couple that's hurt they need your help they need a, a sweet hand 
the loving hand. See what I'm getting at here? That's what my Bible is talking about here. Anger is unacceptable. James 1, 19 and 20. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Was I guilty of any of this this week? Was you guilty of any of this this week? We could have been. Maybe not. But I think this. If we do find ourselves guilty of that, immediately, immediately, go somewhere and get alone and get on your knees and ask God to forgive you. Don't keep it in. Don't hold it in. Don't blame it on somebody else. It's you. It's me. Get alone and see what God can do about it, abolishing anger in your heart and in your mind and in your life. You see, listen now. The bottom line is we'll never accomplish God's will with anger. Please memorize that. Write it down. Make sure you've got it real close at hand so you can quote it or write it down over and over and over and over again. I would imagine that every person in this building right now has been really hurt at one time or another. I mean really hurt. You were hurt so bad that you didn't want to reveal it because you might have thought, well, somebody will think I'm a sissy, that I don't know how to handle other people, all of that kind of thing. But watch out. Old Slewfoot is always around. He can only be at one place at one time. I was listening to Billy Graham preach last night. By the way, Sue and I love spending our evening listening to preaching. I love to hear Billy Graham preach. Our brother out in Texas that preached in Memphis, uh, uh, the, the, Adrian Rogers, if you get a chance and you've never heard Adrian Rogers preach, you've missed something. What a wonderful man he is. And these men know the word of God. And I love to hear those men preach. And there are others that can just absolutely help you with living your life. Now think with me here. Anger is unacceptable to the Lord. Let me read this again. The bottom line is never accomplish God's will with anger. Number two. Now this is important. Listen now. Anger leads to more anger. Anger is unacceptable to God, but anger leads to more anger. Listen, this is a vicious cycle that can culminate in tragedy. You believe that? I do. It can culminate in destruction in so many different ways. Now watch this. It can culminate in destruction of all that we hold precious. Now here's a verse that I have read many times down through the years, Proverbs 10, 12. Listen. Hatred stirreth up strifes. Hatred stirreth up strifes. But love covereth all sins. If you think your anger is bad now, just wait. You haven't seen anything yet. Let's let that soak in, guys and gals. I want to soak it in because I don't want to hurt you in any way. I don't want to hurt my kids or my wife in any way. We like to kid one another. We have a lot of fun kidding one another, but laughter with one another is one thing. And so I want to give you this again because it's very important, I think. Anger leads to more anger. In a vicious cycle which culminates in the destruction of all we hold precious, Proverbs 10, 12 teaches, hatred stirreth up strife, but love covereth all sins. If you think your anger is bad now, just wait. You haven't seen anything. Now, here's the last thing I want to give you today, and we'll pray, and you can go eat or whatever. 
Listen, and you know this, anger is addictive. Anger is addictive. If you really get addicted to anger, and I really get addicted to anger, and keep doing it over a period of time, do you know how hard and difficult it is to get away from that? Do you know how difficult it is to cut the cord from that? See, you and I need to hold short meetings with anything that's wicked, devilish, anything that would hurt somebody else. Keep close accounts with that. Close accounts. This old book, this old book, what a book. See this truth. A man great, a man of great wrath shall suffer punishment. For if thou deliver him, yet thou must do it again. It is a continuous evil cycle that is addictive, but it's also true. Let me read it one more time, and then we'll stand and we'll pray. Now, anger is unacceptable to God. Anger leads to more anger. Anger is addictive. Now, again, that's Proverbs 19.9. We see this truth. A man of great wrath shall suffer punishment, for thou deliverest him, yet thou must do it again. It is a continuous evil cycle that is addictive. It's also true. Let's stand, please, and we'll be dismissed in prayer. Now, be much in prayer uh, for this afternoon, and then be back this evening in our uh, evening service and looking forward to what the Lord has to say uh, to us.